G'day YouTube, 1MJ here and welcome back. Alright, Wednesday, sort of just after lunchtime here in Australia, market is down again 2.3%. We're now at $1.88 trillion and things are looking dicey. But are they? There's always a flip side. While yes, at the moment things aren't looking great, sometimes we need to scale out. So what I've done here is year to date, if you're in Bitcoin, you're up 54%. It's just this year, nine months. If you're in longer, then you're up more. Ethereum, you're up 295%. 1,000% if you're in ADA. Not so good in USDT. <laughs> and we'll have a look at US uh, dollars, how they're doing overall. Binance, 800. XRP, 279. Solana, 8,000%. Doge, 4,000%. Polkadot, 300%. Six months, Bitcoin's definitely down. But you're still up, look, 70% on Ethereum, uh, nearly 80% on ADA, 30%. As you can see, the losses, they're only really coming in the last month, in the last seven days, and a little bit in the last 24 hours. So sometimes you just need to zoom out a little bit and not get too worried about the day-to-day -day stuff. I'm going to show you what uh, a lot of all this uh, dumping specifically has been uh, in a slide that we get to shortly. But this is really what you need to do is you need to scale out. Yes, some things are down and some things are down a lot over the last month, you know, the last seven days, the last 24 hours, whatever. But you keep going back, these numbers just keep growing. That's the way it is. Time in the market is way better than trying to time the market. If you're going to get caught up in the day-to-day -day stuff, you're going to get wrecked, and it means you're possibly a trader or just a noob, someone who's too new to the market, doesn't understand how things works, and you probably should let other people uh, handle your money in all fairness. And I don't like the other idea of other people handling uh, people's money, really. You should be able to be smart enough and intelligent enough, and it's not that hard to do, to work out what you should be doing with your money. But it does mean you have to put in a little time and effort and again, not get caught up in the small movements. All right, <clears throat> Bitcoin dominance has risen. People getting scared in the altcoins and I've said this before, the altcoins, the gains are amazing, but the losses are generally a lot more. Bitcoin is one of, if not the most stable cryptocurrency out there other than stable coins. It doesn't go up by as much as uh, some of the others do, but it doesn't go down by as much as some of the others do as well. And we can see here year to date, 54 compared to these hundreds of percent. But then we can see Bitcoin's only down by 1%, Ethereum's down by 4, ADA down by 3, BNB down by 3, uh, XRP down by 3, Sol down by 5, and, and so on and so on. And that is why I recommend you should have and again, this is personal opinion, never financial advice, but you should have a minimum of about 30% tied up in Bitcoin. And then maybe consider never selling Bitcoin. But if you do sell it, sell for a profit. Don't sell for a loss. That's just a waste. Selling anything for a loss unless there's some kind of tax exemption or tax write-off or something. And again, I hope you've got financial advice for that. Selling at a loss just doesn't pay off. It just seems silly. There was no point in buying it. You may as well have just, you know, put your money into something else. So again, we'll get on to that. So volume down a little bit, uh, well, by a lot, nearly 10%. And again, that's people getting spooked out by the market. Bitcoin price down at 42,000 and gas prices rising a little bit. And I'd say a lot of that is people jumping back into stable coins and moving out of uh, altcoins at the moment. Because again, they're all just, uh, a lot of people are getting shook out. But again, we'll have a look at exactly who's getting shook out. Here's the Bitcoin price. Definitely came down, but have a look at where it's sitting. Or where it sort of came down to, sorry. It's come down to some old resistance points and almost bounced perfectly off it. And then look where it's risen back up to. Some old resistance points. I mean, you can't chart this perfectly. This line's been in here for ages. Look where it is. Sitting right back on this line at the moment. So old resistance turns into... Sometimes new support, this could be resistance and we could go down lower. We'll have to wait and see. But as I said, I'm not panicking until really Bitcoin gets down to around about here. And I'm not talking some random wick. If we get one wick that comes down there, so be it. I'm not going to worry too much. It's if I see regular candle closes keep coming down and then again going under 38,000, 
yes, I'm going to sell my altcoins, the ones that hopefully I still have a profit in, uh, because then I think we are actually in a bear market and this would have been a dead cat bounce. But I don't think we're in a dead cat bounce. And the reason for that is, I showed this the other day. This is monthly charts stretched out over years, going as back as far as I can, which was March 2017. And all these arrows, they're Septembers. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Nine Septembers. Two of them were green. All the rest were red. And some with some really large wicks. And have a look at these two green Septembers that we've had since 2013. They were very, very small. So Septembers, almost all the time, you could say 80% of the time, are bad months. We're currently in a September right now. And it's looking pretty bearish. But then you need to look what happens after Septembers. Not a great month. Look at that run up. Now this was in a bear market, so it was going to go down, but it had a green month not too long after. Now whether that would make up for that or not, I don't know, but let's go here. Boom, good run up after it. Boom, good run up after it. Boom, good run up after it. Again, in a bear market. And again, in a bit of a sort of bear market here, but then boom. So a bit red chances are it's probably going to go up based on history. Now, history doesn't always repeat itself, but it quite often rhymes. So all we can see here is that traditionally September's are bad months. There's hardly any good ones. And again, we don't have this going back far enough to see uh, 2012, uh, 2011 uh, and 10 and that. But I think I've seen something before. And again, it's near 80, 90% of September's uh, since Bitcoin's inception, which is then the crypto markets, have been red. So don't get too freaked out by this red at the moment. It is what it is. Remember, this is where Bitcoin's traveling. This is, the, this is the average fair price here on the monthly. We're above that price. So could it come back down and touch here? Could, again, the charts change? Absolutely. But what happens when it comes back to here? Generally, it starts to go back up. And again, I showed this the other day. If you just keep stretching this line out, 1st of February 2024, roughly, you know, we could put that around about sort of here, or 1st of March 2024, it'd be $134,000. And that would be the average sort of fair price of it. That's not to say if it was to the upside. And even if it was a little bit to the downside, let's say maybe it's worth 86,000 again. There's no guarantees in life, but this has been the general trajectory traje trajectory of Bitcoin since its inception. So it's very easy to get shaken out, again, in the day-to-day -day things, and sometimes even the week-to-week, month-to-month, because, I mean, look at this, monthly, oh, it just looks awful. But hence why I don't like to buy things at all-time highs. I want to buy things at a discount. Because when you buy things at all-time highs, and th there was people who bought uh, Bitcoin here, Look how long they had to wait. 1st of November 2013, if they're unlucky enough to buy uh, in the high here. And they had to wait till 1st of January 2017 just to roughly break even because they were buying at all-time highs. Whereas if they had have just waited for a, a red, you know, couple of days, weeks, whatever, even a month, even if you bought down here, all of a sudden you're waiting a whole lot less, a couple of months less to break even. Should you then wait even longer? Wait to buy down here to break even? You only have to wait a few months. So be careful of running out and chasing the new shiny thing. That's at all-time highs. That's a newbie thing. That's what new people to the market do. They push it up so high because they just don't know any better. If you want to change your life and particularly in the investing strategy i'm not you know i can't help you so much with the trading but with investing be careful buying things at all-time highs if it's just breaking over an old all-time high so i.e you know it's been here before and now all of a sudden you're buying at a roundabout here maybe not so bad because this is what you could call a breakout trade that may work but again it's not always but that is the problem people come and see things pumping and it's a newbie thing and they go I want that, I'm getting on it, it's pumping, it's going to the moon. 
you're probably already at the stage where it's getting ready to fall over. Not always, not guaranteed, but that's generally what's happening. That is the mindset uh, of the new investor, whereas more seasoned investors, they don't go chasing those kind of things. Now, you may be asking yourself if you are new, and if you're watching my channel and, and new to cryptocurrencies, welcome. I really love this space. Hopefully, you'll get some uh, good uh, sort of tips, and that's all they are is their tips. Uh, it's personal opinion, not financial advice that may help you in this uh, kind of space. Because say you came in here, and now all of a sudden it's down here, and you're starting to panic and wanting to get out. You've got to do right by you, but you don't lose until you sell at a loss. If you're in a good project, you've done a little bit of research and things like that, you just might have to hold. And again, you may be in the unlucky space of buying something here and it takes you four years before you even break even. That may be what happens. But look what has happened if you have waited from there. Again, someone I can guarantee you bought this in 2013. Imagine they bought Bitcoin at $1,000. Had to wait four years to break even, but then they just thought, Mate, it was $1,000. I'm just going to leave it and see what happens. It's now worth $43,000. They 43x their money simply by holding and holding a good asset. You sell when there's a reason to. A lot of people want to know how the rich get rich. They buy things at a discount and they generally hold. And they only sell when they have to. The hedge funds and that, they're regularly trading all the time and doing all this crazy stuff. That's why the rich people let them handle that. But they don't worry. They buy things and they hold. And they only sell when there's a reason to sell. And they will sell when it's at a good price and there's something else better to buy. What else is there better to buy than Bitcoin at the moment? And I'm not saying there's nothing. I just don't know of anything at the moment. Maybe some altcoins, yeah. But again, I just showed you before. Bitcoin is still going up plenty, 50% in the year to date, but it's down a, way, a whole lot less than half these other altcoins. These other altcoins are generally, their losses are much higher. Now, not always, there's outliers like XRP, but that's hardly moving at all. Bitcoin's loss compared to Ethereum is nearly four times less. Bitcoin's loss compared to Polkadot is nearly five times less. Six times, nearly seven times less than Solana. So that's what I'm saying. I'm not knocking any of these other projects. Uh, I like a lot of these projects in the top 10, definitely uh, the top 10, but, you know, top 50 and top 100, heaps of good projects. But, gee, when they get hit uh, by downside, it's, you know, multitudes higher than Bitcoin. Hence why I really like to focus on Bitcoin. So, again... You, you may be asking yourself, all right, I want to take my money out and invest in something else. Okay, well, let's have a look at the S&P. Let's see where that is. It's been falling off a cliff as well. So Bitcoin, yep, not looking so good. SPX, and again, this is uh, on the daily as opposed to the monthly, uh, but we can go back to the daily. Falling over. SPX, falling over. Let's go to gold. Falling over, falling over, falling over. Everything's falling over. And so then you may say, oh, well, I just want to be in cash then. Okay. Here's how cash is done since going back to the 1920s. You had $26 in cash and held it. And I know that's a really long time. That's 80 years. But look what keeps happening to it. It's just getting worth less and less and less and less. Now, in the short term, again, you may want to jump in and out of cash and you know jump into new trades and all the rest of it. If you're good enough to do that, congratulations. There's only a select few that actually can do that. A lot of traders, most traders, actually lose money. And they lose on most trades. The lucky, or well, I won't say lucky, I'll say the good ones, and there's very few of them, they have a whole lot of losing trades but then they have one or two trades that just really pay off and it makes up for all the losing ones. And there's very few people that can do that. So again, you need to ask yourself, are you investing for the long term or are you trying to you know, out-trade the market? And good luck to you if you think you can do that. There are some people that do all right, but again, most of them have losing trades. It's just they have a couple of really good trades here and there that make up for the losses. And if you can do that, that's great. But the dollar doesn't look like the better bet to me. 
And again, we can see Bitcoin. Yes, the dips are super volatile and they hurt, but look where it's been going. You will not have been able to say so you got into Bitcoin 1st of July 2013 for $90. So seven years ago, you bought one Bitcoin for $90. Sorry, not seven years, uh, eight years ago, because it's 2021. My bad. Eight years ago, you bought something for $80 that's now worth $42,000. You're not doing that in the stock market, I can tell you right now. Not in that kind of time. You just, you, you won't have. There's nothing that would have gone up by that much. Gold has not performed that well. Gold is sitting, uh, so yeah, gold is sitting at $1,777. Look where gold's been since going back to 2011. It went down, unless you were lucky enough to buy in 2016. It's only back where it was, and there's no guarantees that it's going to go a whole lot higher. It's really just kind of chopping sideways at the moment. Again, no guarantees. Gold could go on some amazing run. Who knows? But really, imagine sitting in something for 10 years and you're basically just back to where you were 10 years ago. You saw a whole lot of downside. You somehow didn't panic sell here. The only people that are doing really well in gold are the people who may have been lucky enough to buy uh, in December 2015. They've seen massive upside. Anyone else? Not so much. And again, you can go back even further. Look, you have to buy, now you have to go back to 2009 to kind of really make good profits. So gold, not a great bet. And again, we look at the dollar, the dollar is just getting absolutely crushed. Short term, jumping in and out of the dollar maybe, but long term, the dollar won't help you. I am yet to see a chart that looks like this. Something I found on Twitter that's very, very interesting. 96.8% of all Bitcoin volume transaction on chain in yesterday's flush, and that was back on the 20th of September, was less than a week old. And 99% of it was people that had it for less than three months. That's here. This is 99% of all the volume, all the selling off that happened. It's newbies. Look at people who are six months to a year, less than 1% of them sold. Oh, sorry, 1% one, one, uh, of those sold. One to two years, 0.03 of a percent. All the people who've been in long enough, they're not panicking, they're not selling, they're just holding. It is the new money that's panicking and selling at the moment. And again, if you're new money, pay attention to this stuff. This is where, you know, you may be falling. Sorry, I'll take you back to this one. This is Bitcoin's trajectory. This is where it's been going since its inception. Now, will this last forever and will it always be up like this? No, but we don't even have mainstream adoption yet. So what do you think happens when we get mainstream adoption? The price will likely rise even more until we get to that what they call saturation point, where suddenly basically, you know, the majority of the world is now on Bitcoin. Then it is going to level out. What that price is, how long that takes, I can't tell you. But until we get to that stage, this is likely to likely to continue. And again, I did this the other day. I'll do it again. We're going to take Bitcoin from here. We're going to keep this line going. Now, again, this is just an estimate. It's not a guarantee. Now you're at the 1st of May, 2026. And Bitcoin is worth one million four hundred and sixty-two thousand. No, what is that? Sorry, a hundred and fourth. No, I think that is one. God, what is that? Sixty-four, two hundred thousand. Yeah, I think that's one million dollars. Is it? God, I can't read properly. Yeah, I think it is. Yeah, because that's a hundred thousand down there. So there you go. If Bitcoin follows its current trajectory. By 2026, it'll be worth a million dollars. And that'll just be the fair price. Again, we haven't even hit mainstream adoption. Mainstream adoption will likely push it higher. And we can see how far it gets away from the fair price. So that is based on its fair price. It could easily be up here. I'm not saying it will be, not giving you financial advice, but that's the upside of Bitcoin. 
That is why I invest in the cryptocurrency space. And this is what Bitcoin's doing, let alone you start to look at things like Ethereum and other coins that are still very early. And again, I'm not saying don't get in, I'm not saying, you know, forget Bitcoin and go chasing these other altcoins. They don't have the history that Bitcoin does. That's why I put minimum 30% of my portfolio is invested in Bitcoin because it's the safest bet. It is my great store of value. Will it go down? Yep. So what took there? Uh, November 2013 to 1st of August 2000. So about uh, almost sort of two years to get to the bottom. So there might be two years if you're really unlucky and buy the top uh, before it hits its bottom. But after that, it's all upside and it just continues to go up. This is a new emerging market. This is where we are at the moment. We're now down to 21 in the fear and greed index. The greatest fortunes are made when there's most when it's most fearful. That's one of the hardest things to do uh, when investing. And, and I know I've made all the mistakes that I'll talk about and had to go through all these, you know, mental hurdles. I used to hate buying here. I'd be like, nah, it's going lower. I'm going to wait till it gets to the bottom. I've got no idea when the bottom is. And we're going to talk about that very shortly. But I know when it gets to around here is when I want to start to think about selling. Now, it can stay in the green for a really, really long time. It really can. So it's not as soon as it gets green, it means you sell. You got to take into a lot of other. You got to take into account a lot of other things, but it's near maximum fear. This is where we are at the moment, and this is the entire history of Bitcoin. Again, this is going back to the first of February two thousand eighteen. Look where it is. What happens to Bitcoin when we get down here? Generally, up, 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 up. Any time you're down around this twenty mark, it's not to say that it can't go lower. It definitely can. But there's generally upside to come and it's not too far away. It could be a couple of days, could be a couple of hours, could be a couple of weeks, could be a couple of months. But eventually, boom, you see these big upsides. Boom, boom. It just repeats over and over again. So we're here. Could we come down to here? Absolutely we could. But what comes after that? Boom. That is the hard part of trying to be a good investor is you're going to get shaken out a lot. I want to show you something. I spoke about this the other day and it was Baron Rothschild. He was the one that made this quote. Somebody interviewed him and they asked him, you know, what's your secret about investing and all the rest of it? How did you make so much money? And he says, I'll tell you the secret if you wish. It is this. I never buy at the bottom and I always sell too soon. In order to buy at the very bottom or sell at the very top, one would have to be able to tell the future. No one can tell the future, and I mean that. There's no one. There's no one person out there that is constantly selling the top and buying the bottom. Not one. The majority of gains and the best quality of gains in a stock market are made in the middle of a trend. A stock or market's movements are usually choppy at the tops and bottoms with smoother trends evolving in between. So what do we got going on right now? A lot of choppiness. So that means we're either at the bottom or we're near the top. I think we're probably more kind of close to the top. But again, this could be the new bottom. I put a thing out on Twitter the other day saying, uh, has the four year cycle uh, ended? And most people, I think everyone said no, actually. No one said yes. But maybe they are changing. They aren't looking exactly the same. Now, we talk about buying the dips. It's really, really hard and a lot of people run out of money. Now, if you just had a thousand bucks and that's all you ever had to invest and you put it all in, then you can't buy the dips. But you won't lose money until you sell for a loss. That's when you've lost your money. If you're in a good project that you believe in, have done your research, it's not some ultra super risky you know, altcoin that's got no history, nothing to go by, then I can't help you. But a lot of people, they do the DCA, so it's dollar cost averaging. They keep dollar cost averaging. And again, people say, oh, but, you know, if I dollar cost average every, you know, once a fortnight and I put all my money in and it dips in between that fortnight, I can't buy in. I agree, you can't because you spent all your money. So this is just a little pie graph. When you're dollar cost averaging, if it's daily, weekly, fortnightly, monthly, whatever it is, 
And you don't have to do it. This You can increase this, lower it. It's up to you. This is just an example. This is something I do. 20% of my DCAing goes into a stable coin. And then the other 80% will go into a crypto. And I change this on occasions. Particularly if I think we're in a bear market, I change this up. I'll probably go nearly 40% into stable coins and then only 60, maybe even 50, 50% into crypto. But I don't believe we're in a bear market at the moment. I think this is just a blip in the radar. But 20% into stable coins, 80% into crypto. And again, you can mix that up into whatever cryptos you like. And again, try and diversify even in crypto. Don't just again go all into one thing unless, you know, if you do, I hope it works out for you. But anyway, we'll move on from that. 80% into crypto, 20% into stable coins. If there's a 20% dip, deploy 10% of your cash. Only 10%. Never just chuck it all in because you'll then end up where you were before. Now you've got no more uh, cash on the side. What happens if it dips again? you got no cash. What happens if it dips after it's dip like it has been at the moment? Had a dip, had a dip, we might have another dip and it just keeps going on until it gets to the bottom. Remembering, Baron Rothschild, he never sold the top and he never bought the bottom. He made all his money in between. He wasn't getting caught up in this stuff. So again, if you see a you know 20% dip, 10% of whatever cash you have put in. If you see another dip and now it becomes a 30% dip, put in 20% of whatever cash you have. If it dips even further and now it's 50% down from its all-time high, deploy 50% of your cash. But you're basically going to have it so there is always cash on the side so you can continue to buy the dip. You can't buy the dip though if you've got no cash. If you're just constantly all in, you run out. Again, unless you're DCAing, but then you may not be buying at the best prices. You've got to wait until, you know, whatever your payday is. If it's a day later, a week later, a month later, you can't buy the ultimate, uh, you know, the better prices because you've missed them. So consider this. But basically what I wanted to do today is to show you that this is Bitcoin. You make your own decision. If you're here watching my videos, I'm guessing you know my thoughts on crypto and you're interested in crypto. You're not going to sell here and you're not going to buy here. You really aren't. You might think, no, nah, I'm going to. I'm going to know. No, you won't. Not even the big guys know. If they did, the markets wouldn't look like this. It would just be one straight up and one straight down. One straight up and one straight down because the big guys know exactly when to sell and exactly when to buy. They don't. That's why the market chops and changes all over the place. There's so many things going on in the world, so many different people investing, everyone's trying to outdo each other. Nobody knows what's truly going to happen. But this is the trajectory of Bitcoin. And this is only going back since 2000, and as I think there's a little bit, yeah, since 2013, there's uh, a couple of years there that we've missed, but it still basically plays out the same. This is Bitcoin's trajectory, and again, we don't have mainstream adoption yet. We may not get mainstream adoption until 2024. Maybe it stretches all the way up to 2030. So this should be roughly kind of the bare minimum because once we get mainstream adoption, there should be a fairly heavy kind of spike and then we level out. There is people talking about Bitcoin leveling out at around about sort of $10 million. I don't know if it'll get to 10 million, but according to this, if we just keep on going, Sorry, I'd say around about sort of 10 million. It's going to be, let's go, 2030. Let's go there. Roughly by 2030, if Bitcoin keeps on its trajectory, it could be worth, and it's a could, no guarantees in life, but it could be worth $10 million if it just keeps following this. And again, that's without mainstream adoption. We don't have that yet. I think there's, you know, 2%, maybe 5% of people in the world are invested in Bitcoin and cryptocurrencies at the moment. That's why I'm in Bitcoin. Does this hurt and scare me a little bit when it drops? Yep, absolutely it does. But am I panic selling? Am I, you know, chucking the towel in? No. Because the other thing you need to think about is every time you sell, it's going to cost you. The tax man, 
So if you sell for a profit, which is great, I'm not saying if you're not in profit, don't sell, but just know the tax man's taking 50% of that. Again, you want to know how the rich stay rich, and it's taken me a long time to wrap my head around this, and I'm now trying to copy exactly what they do because that's a, a well-defined path that I know works. Now, I'm not investing in the same things as them. Obviously, I'm in cryptocurrencies. They're all just coming across to it, but I'm buying and holding. I'm only selling if there's something better to buy. If there's nothing better to buy, why would you sell? We don't have an asset that has performed as well as Bitcoin, not one on earth. And again, there's all these new cryptos that I'm not saying can't outperform Bitcoin, but they don't have a decade plus worth of history. Most of the cryptocurrencies out there maybe have five years, if that, i.e. Ethereum. I think that was 2015. XRP, I think 2011, but that hasn't done all that well. Although again, maybe you know now's the time that it's getting ready to do its thing. Who knows? And a lot of the other cryptocurrencies that were super popular back in just 2017, the last bull run that everyone said was going to change the world, are now basically nothing coins. EOS, Tron, uh, what's the other one I was thinking? NEO. There's so many coins out there from 2017 that are hardly doing anything. So it's easy to think, nah, it's different. My coin's different. Okay, well, for you, I hope that it really is. I really do hope that. And I think a lot of coins that are coming out now probably will have a good chance at being around long term because they are actually, they're, they're developing real world things. Whereas in 2017, they were a promise that one day they might. And even Ethereum, it's taken a long time to get where it was. They were promising all these smart contracts and all this back in 2017. And they said it was supposed to be done by 2018. It took to 2020 for those smart contracts to finally happen. And again, we're still going through the ETH 2.0 upgrade. So chase all the altcoins you want if you want. That's great. But just know that there's a good chance a lot of them, not all of them, but a lot of them, they just won't turn into anything. I've said this before, I consider myself like a VC when I'm investing in cryptocurrencies. I'm not a VC, as and I've got the big money and I'm always getting in super early, but at the moment I am super early in the terms of crypto, and so are you if you're here at the moment. But a lot of these startups, and that's what it's like investing, probably not going to be around in four or five years. So if you get in profit, take some off the table. Don't just think I'm chucking it in and I can just leave it for 10 years and I'm going to have these kind of returns. One or two of them out of maybe 10 or 15 or 20 that you put your money into might do this. The rest of them won't. So I don't mean to you know, drag this on too long, but again, there's a lot of fear in the market. And this is when I get super excited though. I'm still fearful, don't get me wrong. But again, I've now trained myself to realize that this is the best, not the best, but the better opportunities. Could it go lower? Yes. I'm going to keep investing all the way down to wherever the bottom is. I'm just going to continue to put money in because I know once it finally goes to the upside. So again, might have got in here and it's like, oh no, I bought Bitcoin at 13,000. This sucks. Bugger you. Uh, I believe in it and I've seen all this stuff before. So I keep investing, keep investing, keep investing till we get to here. I've found the bottom and I just kept investing because I made the smart decisions again. Over here, always having stable coins on the side, not just going 100% in because it kept dipping and it kept dipping and it kept dipping. But eventually, again, let's say you bought at 13,000 and it's taken you from December 2017 until November 2020. So basically three years, you haven't actually broken even because you invested all the way down here and then you started to make all this upside and you're even hopefully investing in the upside. And this is where you've probably broken even more somewhere back sort of around here because you were investing on the way down. It's lowering your average buy-in price as well. And that's how you build that great base and then you start to make those explosive gains. And again, you continue to just invest all the way through, all the way through, all the way through, even to here. And then Bitcoin goes all the way to, again, let's say it gets up to here. I mean, what are we looking at? $50 million. Possible. Not saying it will, but possible. Uh, no, that's $5 million there, I think. Yeah, 
millions of dollars anyway possible so that's where i'm at i just uh, again i'm rambling on a little bit and i do apologize but i know there's again a lot of fear in the market people are really really scared if you've done your research and there's more to you know getting into coins than just this this is very basic and rudimentary but sometimes this you know the most simple chart is the best and this is the most simple chart that i have for bitcoin hence why i put money into it you know, you can chuck on RSIs and MACDs and, you know, moving averages and things like that. And then it can tell you when's a better time to buy. The best time to buy at the moment is when Bitcoin hits this line. But sometimes it doesn't come back to the line for a really long time. But specifically here, you wouldn't want to wait to buy Bitcoin. Oh, it's on the line, so I bought it at $1,000, but I won't touch it now again. Because the next time you invest, you're going to have to wait and it's already four times as much. So you just need to remember that. DCA through and through and eventually you will again no guarantees in life not financial advice but you probably likely do well and from one of the best investors in the world he never bought the bottom he never sold the top he quite often sold too early but he set his family up for life because it was all the best quality of gains in a stock or a market made in the middle of a trend not the beginning and not the end all right that's it from me Stay safe, be kind to one another. Pretty hard to be on that game train at the moment, but again, all this information hopefully uh, has helped you, you know, make some better decisions, not simply just, you know, because I told you so, but it's, you know, giving you some uh, hints and tips. All right, I'm out. See you next time.